Yeah, so I'm Haley. I'm a recent UNH graduate, um, and I had I got the um, summer undergraduate research fellowship through UNH, and that gave me the opportunity to work with Brewster Ponds Coalition and APCC down in Brewster, and look at some aerosols. So first, I'm just going to give you some quick background. So aerosols are essentially just water particles that are suspended in the air. And cyanobacteria have the ability to form aerosols, but they are not the only microbial species that can be found in the air. Um, and we care about this because they're an important route of exposure to cyanotoxins. So the cyanotoxins I focused on during the study were BMAA and MC. So BMAA is our neurotoxin that's produced by cyanobacteria, and it's been linked to ALS and other neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and then our MC is the liver toxin produced by cyanobacteria, which has been linked to non-alcoholic liver disease. Um, and we're exposed to these cyanotoxins through direct consumption, as we know, so drinking water or eating fish that are in the water, but also through aerosolization. So whether you're just sitting by the shore reading a book, breathing, or if you're um, like on a boat and doing water skiing or whatever. So yeah. So we developed the clam to be able to collect aerosols. So the clam is the compact lake aerosol monitor. And the idea is that the funnel over there, it sucks the air off the surface of the water and then it brings it through a filter and this collects the particulate. <coughs> so these are any cells that have cyanobacteria toxins within them. And then that air gets pumped through a series of three liquid traps. And since BMAA and MC are both water soluble, the idea is that the dissolved toxins in the air will um, stay in the water and then we can pull out that water and test it. So then we combine our results from the water and from the filter and that's our total aerosolized toxin that we're able to collect. So this summer we did lots of sampling, um, mainly on Lower Mill Pond and Cliff Pond, which are both in Brewster. Um, we did water fractioning and we ran the clam for the aerosols at both of these locations. Um, and I also collected a lot of weather data and stuff. But for the purpose of time, I'm just gonna focus on the aerosols at Lower Mill Pond for this presentation. So I had two main research questions during the study. Number one, are cyanobacterial toxins present in um, the air and the water at these ponds? And can, are they present in levels that we can detect? And how does the um, aerosol production change throughout the summer with the change of cyanobacteria composition and with different environmental um, conditions? So for our results for lower mill, this is a graph of our microcystin that we were able to detect. Um, so our maximum concentration, as you can see, was on July 5th. And we had 552 picograms of microcystin per meter cube that we were able to detect. And our average for these dates um, was 385 picograms of MC per meter cubed. Um, and this can be compared to a similar study that we did summer of 2018 at the Charles River, um, where our average, this number actually needs to be update, updated, our average was 90.7 picograms of microcystin per meter cubed. Um, so as you can see, the numbers that we got in this study were a little bit higher but part of that could be um, because we were using a slightly updated version of the clam and this one we seem to have like better results with. So part of that could be due to that. And then these are our BMAA results. So as you can see, our maximum was 303 nanograms of BMAA per meter cubed. And this was on the same date on July 5th. Our average was 145 nanograms of BMAA per meter cubed. Or these are these are picograms, sorry. Oh no, BMA is nanograms, MC is picograms. So they're different um, units, so that's something to keep in mind. And then this can be compared to our Charles River study where we had an average of 10 nanograms of BMA per meter cubed. So our conclusions, essentially it worked. So we were able to detect BMA and MC in the air at Lower Mill Pond and at Cliff Pond as well. Um, and we had a peak of both toxins on the same date, which is very interesting. Um, so this brings up a lot of questions that I can't exactly answer right now, such as 
why. Why are these numbers changing and why, why do we have peaks at certain times? Are they due to biotic or abiotic factors? And what kind of um, potential health risk does this present? And just a quick thank you to everyone that worked on this um, project. And so Karen, everyone at BPC, Gwen, Marty, everyone at APCC, Brian, all of our citizen scientists, and then of course, Nancy and Dr. Haney. Some references. Anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm.